think everybody else who likes down to get a couch once well. Hi, I'm Farhan um, Thai. A few months ago, I was asked. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's the onboard computer. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, a few months ago, I was asked to speak at this conference, and the idea was very intriguing to me. But there was a, a nagging question that kept coming. Which was, what can I speak about at a consumer's conference? I'm an actor, right? And the more I thought about it, I discovered that we are all working towards achieving a distinct product and brand. I have a product and I have a brand. When I talk about my career, that's my brand. And when I talk about the character that I play, that's my product, right? Now, you will notice that today we've had many accomplished people who have done amazing stuff in their fields. And it's because they have one single thing in common, which is they found a need in the market and satisfied it. They are true innovators, and they're innovators because they know that sometimes you need a new idea in a new environment, other times you need an old idea in a new environment. But you never can have an old idea in an old environment. That's complacency. That's not true innovation. In my business, in my field, it is a little bit trickier to be innovative. It is a little bit trickier to find the right balance. Usually in a market, what happens is that the success and longevity of a product depends on producing a consistent product that can be then replicated over and over and over again. In my case, I want the quality of my product to be consistent. But my biggest problem has always been that I cannot be predictable. I cannot keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again, because if I do that, I will become yesterday's news. I have to be more inventive of how I go about creating my own product. Now, in my field, the product has to be forever malleable. It has to be forever responsive. It has to be forever changing in the moment. And this poses a very unique challenge for me. Sometimes what my market requires for me is to do the same thing over and over again. And that can be financially beneficial. Don't get me wrong. But it can be detrimental to my brand. Because, let me elaborate, if, in my field, of late there have been a surge of negative roles for people of Muslim origin. Now that can be very lucrative if I keep playing those bad guys, if I commit myself to being that bad guy over and over and over again. But what it does in the long run is that it has huge implications on how Muslims are defined in the media. So I have to be careful how I, how I approach all of this. Now these stereotypes are not something that's exclusive to us. Uh, there are other groups that have dealt with it for many years and are still fighting against these images. I mean, we've all seen the, uh, the black hood, the, uh, the, the Hispanic drug dealer, the uh, Italian mafioso, the, uh, the list goes on and on and on and on. But the truth is that when we look at these images of other people, we don't think twice about it. Why? Because they're not talking about us. Now let's look at some of the images that are associated with Muslims. First, the terrorist, the bad guy, the 7 Eleven guy, <laughs> the cat driver. Right? And even in Disney's Aladdin, 
the evil wazir had distinctly Middle Eastern Muslim features, yet dark and sinister. Right? Now, not, don't get me wrong, because let's take the 7 Eleven guy and the cab driver. These are people who are working very hard to make a living. And it's an honest thing. The problem is that when the media takes these three or four images and puts them out there over and over and over again, we are then being defined by that. And when we see these images, they head home. Why? Because we know that there's more to us. We are full of people. We have more to offer. But those images are being ignored. And what you get is a stereotypical idea of who we are. What we have to be careful about is that we don't always blame the other person for all of this. Because that is very easy. That if they're not doing what they should be doing, they have no responsibility. If it has to happen, it has to come from within us. We have to change these images. The only way to bring about change is to be the change agent yourself. You can't have other people champion your causes because that's not how it works. So, in my case, how do I navigate my career through this life? My approach is being smart and creating a balance. The truth is that right now there are no dirt for bad guys that I can play. There are plenty of them. Do I play them? At times, of course I do, yeah. There are times when I have to acquiesce. And I do that because I can take the money that I make from that and I can use it for projects that are closer to my heart that I think are the stories that need to go out there. Now, I'll give you an example. In the last two years, I've done, I think, five films and about eight or nine television appearances, right? So that's about 13, 14 uh, different projects. Now, out of those 13, 14 projects, only four were projects where I played a bad guy. The rest of them, I played a starship captain, I played a, a guy dying with a spinal tumor, I played a manic depressive, I played a grieving father, I played a man possessed by jinns. So I take, sometimes I will take a project which might not be lucrative, but what it does is that it diversifies my body of work. Because I know that today, the bad guy might be the flavor of the month, and we're hoping that it's only a month. <clears throat> but when it's done, where do I go? I need to diversify as a business to make sure that I keep on acting. The issue that we got into is this, that I was, last year I was promoting a movie, and I was doing some interviews, and there was a question that kept coming back to me over and over and over from the interviews. And the question was, well, you know, we, we look at all your uh, resumes, uh, resume uh, here, and uh, we see that you play a lot of Middle Eastern guys. So how do you feel about playing so many bad guys? <laughs> now, the truth is that, as I said, in the last two years, only four of them are bad guys. But what struck me was that the Muslim name is now synonymous with bad guys. They're not looking at whether I played a good guy or whatever. They're looking at the name, and then they're saying, oh, because it was a Muslim or Middle Eastern or whatever name, therefore this character must have been a bad guy. You see, now, this, does this frustrate me? Absolutely. Does it sadden me? Yes. But I think, it cannot defeat me. It should not defeat me. I tend to use these frustrations as my fuel that pushes me forward. These misunderstandings 
I take them as opportunities to create a better awareness of this fact. It is actually a sign of how we are progressing that we can take these moments, this, this, this old adage that no publicity is bad publicity, well, it's partially true because I can take that and I can engage people in a dialogue about who I really think that I am. And I'll give you a few examples of that. When I started acting, it was about 15, 20 years ago, there weren't too many Muslim Middle Eastern South Asian actors and directors in this country. But all that is changing now. There are more of us in numbers. There is a better push from us to make sure that our side of the story gets out. <laughs> now, a couple of years ago, I was asked to audition for a television show. I read the script, and it was to play a, a very generic terrorist. And, you know, I, I went in, and I uh, looked at the role, and I did the reading. And when I got down, I looked up, and by looking at the, the face of the producers, I knew that, you know, I have a good chance of getting this character. So I get up, and I'm leaving, and the producer uh, calls me, and he goes, so what do you think about this character? Now, he was a dilemma as I'm walking away. That I can go, oh yeah, that was great, that was wonderful. And by doing so, I ensure that, you know, that I that I can get the role. Or I can tell him how I really feel. And that might be, you know, not so good for my pocket, right? So I turned around and, and I said, you know, uh, that's fine. The only thing is that I look at the spec and I see this chock full of negative Muslim characters. And I think it would be interesting if there was a character in here who was really struggling with not taking this path of terror that you have in your story. Life. I said it, I left. Needless to say, I didn't get the job. <laughs> I realized that maybe, you know, maybe my comment didn't sit well, and uh, so I went off to my life. A few weeks later, my agent called me and said that the producer wants to talk to you. I said, okay. So I called the producer and he goes, you know, what you said really kind of, uh, it kind of made me think. And I've written a character based on your advice. And I'd like you to play. And, and to me, that was, that was a great moment because I said what I felt like saying with knowing that it might or might not work out, but just did it. Similarly, I did a movie called Iron Man, and we were successful in getting rid of most of allusions and references to Islam then, because it's a movie that's a superhero movie. I don't think there's any place in it for the bad guys to be Muslim bad guys. They can be soldiers of fortune and just leave it at that. People can make their own inferences, they can create their own ideas of who these people are, but we don't have to say it. We can bear it in a different way. For people, if they're, if they're looking for something different, they will find it. The people who are not looking for something different, they're going to go ahead and they're going to generalize, and that's up to them. I did an episode of Blade's Anatomy uh, last year. And when I read that script, it was about a guy who came from a war-ravaged country who saw his family die in front of him and was now dealing with uh, a very large uh, spinal tumor. And when I auditioned for it, there were other people in that room. There were Caucasians and Asians and, and Africans. And fortunately, I got the role. Uh, it wasn't specified what this guy's background was. So I got the role, and to me that, that was a bit of a, a surety that, you know what, there are times when it is not going to be about religion or ethnicity, it's going to be about American performance. And that's how I got it. So when we got onto on the set, the director asked me, 
what would be a great private moment of this man who's about to go to a surgery, which he might not come out of. And I thought about it, and there was, there was a little door of opportunity here, which was for me to personalize this character. And I suggested, how about a job? How about that before he goes into surgery, we don't even have to hear the talk. By raising his hands and looking up, we have said who this character is. And by doing so, now we have given the history of this character a Muslim background. We never have to talk about the war in this country because in our minds, we can go there. We know that that is happening to some of us. We can then create a character which is a little bit more personal, which is not a generic patient dying, but has more of a personal touch, our touch. Now, I don't do this because I have an agenda. I do this because I really feel that we just have to keep on fighting and slowly, minds will change. The big questions that we have right now are, what can we do? How can we help each other? What is the road forward? How do we go on this road? And how do we get there? So a couple of years ago, I was in New York. I've lived in New York, and I was with my kids. Um, I've never done the touristy thing in New York, but this time, because I had my kids with me, we went to Ellis Island and uh, Statue of Liberty and all that. And while I was at Ellis Island, I was listening to these taped accounts of uh, immigrants who came in. And there was a common theme in all of them. And the theme was that they had nothing, and their savior was a strong community. They all came in. They had an unrelenting determination to help each other out in the beginning. Families and friends would help each other out. But slowly, at some point, they started to work towards the community. And they did that by creating a strong network. And what we're doing today here is, again, we're trying to create that network that binds us together. Now, our community is a little different. Sometimes. We might not even speak the same language. We might have different color skin. We might not, our, our customs might vary. But we can learn from the experiences of other immigrants. We can learn how they have also progressed on this journey. The idea is how to create that strong network. And we can do that today by using today's tools. And today's tools, the biggest tool that we have is media. Because we have learned to use this particular tool to change minds. People have been doing it. We can use the power of media to start a dialogue between the rest of the world and us, where we are equal participants, rather than letting others let us be defined by their ideas or their values. We need to do this by doing what? We need to be able to help each other create a network which pushes each other's product, each other's projects, each other's ways of life forward. I'll give you an example. We, you know, there are, there are all these different kind of medias now. You have this, the regular media, which, where you can advertise with your product and all that, but there's social medias. You have the Facebook, uh, site now. You have Twitter, you have all of these. I'll, my big example is we are trying to push a project right now called Jen, which is seeing the whole idea of Jen through the Muslim tradition. Now we can do that because I can get on my page and I can send out a message to my friends. Some of them are Muslims, others are not. But by doing so, I'm bringing in these people and letting them see our images the way we want to portray them, rather than let them decide, not the blue genie in Disney, but how we understand these, uh, these ideas. 
Now, we can only do this if we all make sure that we are helping each other out. By saying that I'm doing this thing for Jen, who knows, many of you might go to that site, become fans, maybe bring in your friends into the, into the fold, and that's how we will create a different image of who we are as Muslims. I say this with great hope, that forums like this is what's going to promote this particular kind of image reinvention that we need so badly in this country. It is important. It is the most essential ingredient for our survival in this culture and it won't have done. So let's do it. <laughs>